I'm quite shy about kissing uh, for two reasons, both of which are based on probability. The first one is a sad story. I have an injury, which means my neck can move this far to the right, but only this far to the left, which means the probability of me avoiding a nose-to-nose -nose collision is only 50%. That's a problem of probability. But the second problem is to do with cancer, and again, that's a disease of probability, because cancer occurs when your cells grow out of control and they form a tumor or a mass, and the control mechanism is embedded within your DNA. Now, if there's an alteration to that mechanism through damage or mutation, cancer arises. But what has that got to do with kissing? Well, there's a virus known as the Epstein-Barr virus, which is spread through saliva, and it affects an area of the body known as the nasopharynx. So when you laugh and rice comes out of your nose, <laughs> the region the rice passes through from mouth to nose, that's the nasopharynx right there. And the virus affects this region, and it can enter the cells directly and affect the DNA, but there's a more subtle mechanism. By infecting this, it kills the cells, and we need to reproduce them. And every time we do, there's a small but finite chance that there's an error in the copying of our DNA. And if that error occurs in the control mechanism, then the result will be a cancer. Now, for people from South China, we have a 25 times higher chance of getting this particular cancer from this virus than any other country in the world. Which means that when you say, because I'm worth it, I'm actually doing the calculation. It's quite a difficult one. I'm trying to use a dating-friendly technique, so I can use, for example, a nasal swab, and plug that into a portable PCR machine, which can detect the presence of viral DNA. But the problem is it's only 95% accurate. So if I were to test and kiss everyone in the front row, chances are one of you is going to give me a deadly infection. So testing really isn't effective, and the only way for me to mitigate the risk is to modify my behavior. So I'm sorry to disappoint you. Now, this is one example of many of the probabilistic diseases that are a huge global burden today. Think about cancer, stroke, heart disease, all of these are probabilistic diseases, and they're multifactorial, which means the era of this wonder drug that cures a single disease, that's really over. The best method that we have of dealing with these probabilistic diseases is communicating with patients and with the public specifically about the statistics and risks that you all take in your day-to-day -day behavior. Ladies and gentlemen, when you go home tonight, out of sympathy for my kissing plight, I encourage you, please, to think about your own risks and own behaviors. And above all, when it comes to kissing, make sure he or she is worth it. <laughs> Thank you very much. So what made you choose kissing? Was it a desire to kiss everybody in the front row? Um, well, no, I'm a little bit of, I think it's one of these examples of, uh, of probability which uh, I can do more in Europe than in Hong Kong. We're quite a conservative culture. For example, I couldn't invite you out for a cocktail and a nasal swab uh, in Hong Kong, but I, if you're interested, I, I have one uh, available. 9.30? Uh, sure, yeah, it sounds, sounds, sounds good. Uh, <laughs> uh, th this was very romantic. Um, <laughs> yeah. um, so you are a doctor, you are an uh, author of books, so what do you think will be your future career like? Well, I, I think being a doctor really is involved in, uh, in, in being a science communicator to patients. I also do some lecturing for students, so that's some communication. And the most important thing is I have a Chinese mum to whom I need to explain a lot of things that she reads, and she says, oh, okay, Chris, I've read that bacon gives you cancer, uh, bacon cures cancer, uh, and these kind of things. So, you know, uh, I think science communication hopefully will be a big part of what I do in the future. Oops. Thank you. Pucker up, please, for Dr. Christopher C.